Hello there, welcome to episode 65 of Nevermind the Bullens. This is your bite-sized Everton podcast and vodcast. I'm Mike Peters and Ted the Cat is uh, here as well. He may well appear later on. Um, firstly, I must apologise uh, that my voice has gone slightly, but that's basically from all the shouting at Goodison uh, on Monday night. So we can maybe do a kind of a, a late night love style um, sort of podcast as a one-off um, because there was a lot of love uh, late at night in Liverpool last night for uh, after that that three points and some of the football that we played was was scintillating at times. It really was, uh, particularly as we uh, sort of mowed through Burnley in that final half an hour. Right, before we get to that, though, um, you know, it was last night. It really felt like football. Was back. I know that's a trite thing to say because it's been back for weeks and fans have been back and you know been to Goodison obviously for the uh, for the Southampton game. But when you're walking up to the ground, you had a couple of pints before the game. First time we've done that in eighteen months, what have you? And you're thinking to yourself, right, you know, there's a night game. The floodlights are on. It's a different feeling. If you're if you're a football fan that goes to matches regularly, you will know that night games are different to to, to weekday fixtures because there's just that atmosphere in the darkness is just something something you can't quite put your finger on it's something intangible but it's different and it, it it's just sort of misty eyed and those the people you know there's all about great days but they always talk about oh great nights here or great nights there they being European football or league football or whatever or cup football whatever and just last night felt like one of those kind of nights and uh, the atmosphere was it, is a bit different it's a bit sort of louder everything feels a bit noisier and all the rest of it and you know, it wasn't the greatest atmosphere at Goodison. Funny if we were talking of an evening game. It was funny if we were talking about the uh, I mean, the guys that sit around me in the in the lower Gladys were chatting about uh, Duncan Ferguson and uh, uh, his uh, you know Manchester United performance, the, the the rewind as it were back in '05, and chatting about it in the context of Ronaldo reappearing at uh, Goodison Park when United uh, have come to visit. And I you know suggested that we might need to bring Phil Neville out of cryogenic storage just to go and take him take him out again with a tackle, uh, which of course changed the. Uh, the, the, the sort of the the uh, nature of Phil Neville's career and certainly changed the nature of our relationship with him. I think for a lot of of Evertonians, but um, enough of that. But it was terrific to be back there, and you know it, it was. Uh, I think, but having said that, I think we were all a little bit sort of trepidatious before uh, the the game started when the team sheet. And the team news came through uh, that Dominic Calvert-Lewin wasn't going to be available and doesn't sound like he's going to be available for a couple of weeks, sadly, uh, with this broken toe, obviously. Um, Solomon Rondon, of course, not fit uh, enough to start. So you're thinking, right, OK, we've got to play a bit differently here. Bernie, tough test, always physical. You know, can we play a different way and play around them? You know, it was an attacking lineup, three four three, three centre-backs to sort of um, offset and, you know, uh, mitigate that threat of Chris Wood and Ashley, Ashley Barnes. Uh, I thought Dwight McNeil looked quite sharp, certainly in the early exchanges. I can see why we'd be interested in him. I think we've definitely a player we should be looking at going back in for at some point. Um, but we struggled first 20 minutes. We really did. And, you know, we just didn't uh, turn them round. We didn't create enough. We didn't create enough possession uh, and a sort of intense periods of pressure in, in that final third. And they could have easily gone one up. Chris Wood has a good chance, which a player of his... Uh, caliber and repute in the air should be doing better with but saw Jordan Pickford in his eye line and lost the, the flight of the ball as it came in uh, and we got away with one there um, and as the half wore on we started to play a little bit bit better I to you know trying to get the ball down the sides and all the rest of it I wanted Abdelai Decore playing a little bit further forward just to give us a bit more of a physical presence because uh, you know Richarlison can be physical but he just didn't quite do it last night he, uh, you know and therefore everything was being played in front of James Tarkovsky and Ben Mee, and it was quite easy for them to, you know, a team as well drilled as that to defend against. And we couldn't play through them because as soon as we got, you know, uh, into their sort of third, that final third, they dropped two, uh, the two central midfielders, uh, uh, Sam Brownhill uh, and um, Ashley Westwood dropped in and therefore you suddenly got six players. So it was quite difficult and we just didn't quite know what to do. But we were starting to get into the game without really creating any chances. And you're thinking, all right, we'll just keep going second half. Maybe a couple of tactical tweaks. Um, Damari Gray didn't really get in the game first half. Didn't play badly. or just didn't really get in the game. And I didn't think the fullbacks were far enough forward either. The Luca Dean, who didn't have one of his best nights, I have to say. And Seamus Coleman just couldn't get quite far enough forward. But I thought Seamus Coleman did actually have a pretty pretty decent game. And then second half, you know, they get a, a chance. Anders Townsend gets himself uh, booked. And obviously we, we didn't really... 
Defend it brilliantly, obviously. We defended it with the first ball, but weren't quick enough out like the way they are. Every time we moved back a yard when we were attacking in the first half towards the Gladys Street end, they moved a yard out. And it, they're exceptionally well drilled. You know, um, They have their limitations, Burnley, but what you can't fault them for is organisation. Or so you would think. Um, but then, you know, cross comes in. It's a good cross uh, from Goodmanson and Ben Mee gets between two defenders and a couple of players and he just nods it in and it's a, you know nothing Jordan Pickford can can do um because Jordan Pickford had a couple of very comfortable saves to make didn't really have anything major to do um and then but I, it was almost the worst thing that Burnley could have done because they can kind of you know wound every it just woke everybody up really and the crowd did get behind him you know that was it and then um Andros Townsend works himself a good position, even though I was absolutely screaming, hence the reason that I sound like I do today, uh, you know, thinking, why are we playing short corners, faffing around, let's get the ball in the box, because the height that we had was from our defenders, and the physical threat that we had was from our defenders, so we had to use set pieces wisely, but we'd sort of faffed around with them, playing short corners and this and that, and it just hadn't got anywhere. But then, works back out to um, Andros Townsend, drops his shoulder, just works himself a yard of space, whips a lovely ball in. And how Michael Keane was given so much space at the near post by Burnley, I will never know. But I'm delighted that he got that goal because obviously he had a couple of, you know, made a couple of really massive mistakes in the first couple of games. And we, I said before on this podcast about what a confidence sort of based player Michael Keane is. And suddenly, as soon as he scored the goal, he started to... He's, flying 40 yard passes around he was commanding the defenders um, and you know that's the Michael Keane that we want that we know we have in there um, and it's so good to sort of see him back and hopefully now he will he will kick on after that slightly slightly wobbly start to the to the season um, it was interesting the fact that despite the fact that we equalised uh, Rafa stuck to his guns and took off Ben Godfrey nothing against Ben Godfrey's performance it was lovely to see him come and really applaud the fans uh, as he came onto the pitch because actually that's his home debut in front of supporters uh, so that was great and obviously they we responded in kind um, but to bring Andre Gomez on just to pick the ball up because it was getting very hectic very congested we weren't keeping the ball in midfield and and also uh, unleashed Abdullahi Decore as well. He was able to come back a little bit and pick up pockets of space. And all Andre Gomez had to do was keep the ball, give it, keep it simple. Like Leon Osman used to do for so many years, just keep it simple. And that's what we did. And hopefully, you know, the great enigma that is Andre Gomez, certainly over the last couple of years, hopefully we can sort of drag a player out of it. Um, and then Andros Townsend, when he picks the ball up from Abdullahi Decore, I'm thinking, as soon as he got the ball, I thought, this is going in the back of the net. This is going in. and But what what an incredible shot. The way his body shape was wonderful. I've watched that goal I don't know how many times today. It was fantastic from all the angles you know, that's that been put on the Everton uh, YouTube uh, channel. It's fabulous. Um, and then the third goal, again, you know, lovely ball from Abdullahi Decore, courtesy of Andros Townsend, gives it to him. You know, they were the sort of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the triumvirate that made us sort of win the game, really. And then unleashed Amari Gray, how he found that much space. Yeah, in the middle of the um, Burnley defence, I will never know. Runs in, Trevor Steven style against Bayern Munich and slots it home full of confidence. And that was it. The only disappointment, really, and I think Rafa said it in his uh, post-match interview with Sky, is that we didn't score a couple more goals. But we managed the game from that point on brilliantly. Um, and certainly, I had a couple of guys as I was coming away from the ground, sort of, you know, saying this is something that we didn't do last year, where we went one down, you just didn't see how we get back into it, and you just thought, ah, that's it now. Whereas this season, you don't worry about that. We're not worrying about that at this point. So, fourth, four games in. Look at the next two games. Uh, you know, before I think we've got another international break coming up, and you're thinking, right, actually, Villa go to Villa on Saturday. Not an easy place to go. Our record there recently isn't fantastic. Um, you think to yourself, well, a point would be a decent result. Away point's always a good point. Come on, got Norwich at home. Hopefully that goes better than the last time we had Norwich at home, which was just an absolute debacle under Marco Silva. Um, and you're thinking, well, hopefully we can we can sort of um, uh, get ourselves something there. And if we come out of the first six games with, you know, four wins and two draws, um, then you're thinking that's a pretty good start to the season with some of the issues that, we, that we've had. Um so all is, is rosy in the garden. You know, great to see players full of confidence, running, you know, looking at that commitment, that those things that we demand from, from Everton teams. And we don't demand much, but we do demand commitments and energy. And we were getting all of that last night. And 
as because we were getting that, the fans responded to help lift the players when they were, you know, having a couple of minutes that were a little bit dodgy. And that's fantastic to see. The long may it continue. Um, I shall do uh, another one of these um, after uh, the uh, the Villa game on Saturday. And we shall uh, we'll talk again then. Uh, until next time, if you want to get in touch, you can do nmtvpod at gmail.com or at nmtvpod on Twitter. This has been a top content production. Until next time, come on you blues.